Today, um, and we're going to continue our conversation about um, hypothesis testing. So, um, last time again, remember, the subtle distinction, um, we do not have sufficient data to reject H0. We are not saying the population mean was 2 uh, milligrams. So, again, um, that's kind of the point if you fall on that uh, do not reject uh, region. Um, the very, very subtle distinction, or not very subtle distinction, but anyways. Um, one question you might ask is, well, how can I do hypothesis testing if my sample size is large and is greater than uh, or equal to 30? Yes. All you would do is just substitute in, um, instead of T alpha over 2, or T alpha or T alpha over 2 nu, um, you're going to substitute in your Z, basically your Z confidence interval or your Z confidence interval over 2. But one trick that I would use is we know that for large sample sizes that our Z tables and T tables uh, converge. So what I would do if I have a large sample size, I would just use this, T alpha or T alpha over two, and then my new is just infinite. Just use that. So you just look at the T table, you don't have to look at the Z distribution. But again, more power to you. Uh, you go ahead and do <laughs> what you feel uh, is best. So let's do another problem. So uh, looking back at our rolling velocity, does the sample of our rolling magnetic beads come from a population with a velocity of four micrometers uh, ooh, uh, from a population less than? So I'm going to say I'm going to say the velocity um, velocity less than four micrometers at a confidence level of 99 uh, percent. So uh, let's go ahead and tackle that right now. So first step: what is our null hypothesis in our hypothesis testing protocol or framework? Well, our null hypothesis is that uh, H0, so we are going to say that H0, that mu equals 4 micrometers per second. Two, alternative hypothesis, that mu uh, is less than 4 micrometers per second. Three, what's our confidence interval? Confidence interval is 99%, so our alpha equals 0 0.01. Four, we need to calculate our T experimental, which is the same as Z experimental. So it is just going to be X bar minus mu naught divided by SX divided by square root of N. That is going to be, if we look at our notebook, uh, let me calculate that out here. Excuse me. So this is my data list we had previously. So for our, the velocity of our particles, we calculate that here. It's minus 33, huge value. So let's go ahead and look at our, so we can confirm that. So here we go. So that's going to be minus 33. And then five, we need our T alpha value. So is this problem T alpha over two or is it T alpha? So again, we're not doing a T-tail, uh, uh, basically a two-tail test. We are doing a left-tail test. So we need to look at uh, basically that left side. Uh, we need to look at alpha because we're only looked at is it less than this value. We're only looked at one. We're only concerned about one side, not two sides. Um, two sides. We need to do that uh, divided by two. So alpha nu. So we know that that equals T of 0 0.01 to infinity. So if we look at that table, 0 0.01 infinite, 0 0.01, infinite, right here, 2.326. Let's make sure, yep, 2.326, or 3.62. Anyways, so now when we go back to our, uh, so we know that alpha is, again, now notice here on the left side, we have to take the negative value, so minus 2.326. 362. Where does our T experimental fall? Way over here, negative 33. So we reject H0. It does not come from, uh, so we reject the alternative, uh, the H0, uh, our null hypothesis. So, so we reject the null hypothesis that the sample comes from population mean of four micrometers at a confidence level of 99%, right? That makes sense, right? So, it's definitely, um, <laughs> we are definitely rejecting the null hypothesis because, and actually let's look at our statement again. So if if it falls and they reject in shot, we reject in shot and we accept the alternative hypothesis. So it definitely doesn't come from a population mean of four because if we look here, 
look at this. I mean, it's, it's definitely centered around three, so it's not going to... That, that makes sense, again, with our intuition. So, uh, and mathematically, more importantly. So, uh, again, you'll do in the problem set uh, two-tailed tests as well. But just remember that alpha over two, that's going to be a tricky one. I'll probably post another video um, to give you some practice on that one uh, as well. Actually, sorry. Let's go back to here. Um, but yeah. So, now, another uh, quick way, let's say we want to compare two samples, which is often the case. Let's say you have two materials, A and B, with some uh, specific parameter that you're interested in, and you want to kind of see, do they come from, are they significantly different? Do they come from the same population? Um, uh, do their material properties or do their, whatever property you're interested in, do they, are they significantly different? Uh, one way you could do or test that, I mean, you could obviously go through this hypothesis testing, but you could also do this t-test comparison of sample means. Um, and the beauty of this t-test comparison is we can compare small sample sizes, so uh, and less than 30 and greater than 30, or we could have two samples where A is and less than 30, B is and greater than 30. It doesn't matter, as you're going to see in a second. So we can kind of compare anything. Uh, any two samples doesn't matter regardless because we're going to calculate our degrees of freedom independently. So the only thing different here is our t-experimental changes. So this is our t-experimental. So the equation gets a little bit nastier. Um, again, these are just the you know standard. Uh, so this is your sample mean of uh, sample one, sample mean of sample two, number of sample sample one, number uh, standard deviation of sample one, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Et cetera. Um, and unfortunately, we get another nasty equation to calculate our new. Uh, so it's this guy. So I would definitely suggest building or at least copying this um, this function here, where I've already kind of calculated my t experimental and my uh, new. So you could write this function in Mathematica uh, and basically just plug in values here. So see, I'm just plugging in for the mean of measuring one, mean of uh, a and b, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, if I go ahead and do that, uh, and I ask this question, uh, are these materials significantly stiffer? So I have two stiffnesses. So stiffness is Young's modulus. Uh, sometimes you'll see it denoted as Y. Uh, I have two materials, two stiffnesses. I give the standard deviation. I give the number of samples. So let's do the hypothesis testing protocol once again. So what is my null hypothesis? Well, my null hypothesis is that the two samples are the same. The alternative hypothesis is that they're different. So this is already a what? A two-tailed test. What's my confidence interval? Not stated. If your confidence interval, so let's just do this more formally. So this is one, this is two, three. What's my confidence interval? If it's not stated, assume 95%. So alpha equals 0 0.05. Four, what do I have to do? I need to calculate my T experimental, and I'll use that nasty expression up here, uh, and I need to calculate my new values as well. Five, I need to calculate my t alpha over two now because we're doing a two-tailed test. So I know that that is just going to be 0 0.05. But what is my new? Well, I'm going to have to use this expression now for new. So it's not going to be 13, it's not going to be 14, it's not going to be 11. You have to kind of plug into this expression now if you're doing that um, uh, two-sample t-test. So, uh, it is, if we plug in here, 25. Let's just look at our, and this is equal to 0 0.57. So this is 25. So 025, 25, let's go look at it. Just get good at these T tables. 025, 25, 2.060. Let's double check that I didn't make any errors. Nope, I was right. <laughs> so now let's go back again. So 2.060, excuse me. So for here, my value is minus 2.060, 2.060. What was my T experimental? 0.547. So it falls. My T experimental is right here. So 0 0.47, my T experimental. So I fall in the do not reject H naught region. So we will do not uh, reject H naught. There is not a significant data difference in the state of material. So that is lecture three in a nutshell. So in your problem set, you'll have lots of uh, opportunities to practice, uh, and you're going to do lots of hypothesis testing, lots of kind of these uh, um, hypothesis testings, two sample, uh, two T sample, uh, T sample 
two sample t-test comparisons. That's a tongue twister. Uh, you'll work with a little bit on the kind of central limit the distribution, uh, central limit theorem. Uh, but again, mostly practicing these confidence intervals. And yeah, that's it. So next time we are going to get into lecture four, and we are going to be talking about chi-square distributions. Um, it's referred to as a goodness of fit uh, test statistic. Um, it's really, really fun. Uh, there's lots of kind of flipping coins and different uh, kind of properties or like ideas there, or not properties, but um, lots of kind of fun things that are going to happen with um, this distribution. So um, we'll have a little, you know, it's some nice, especially if you like statistics, if you like kind of probabilities, like this is going to be a fun lecture uh, and some video analysis uh, or some, you know, video references. Uh, and again, but the key thing here is going to be drawing out these areas, but we'll get all into that in just a second. And then next time we'll get into lecture five, which after that, um, and we'll look at some propagating uncertainties, which are a little bit difficult conceptually to get through, but um, you'll be experts at that. And then we'll have exam one coming up soon. So um, don't worry about it too much. Let's get lecture three finished. Let's get problems at three done and take everything else after that. Thanks. Have a good one. Bye.